And we are live. Perfect. Good to Hey see there. you, Nathan. Yes, very good to see you. Ah, How so are you today? I'm very well. Thank Let's you. take Thank it you for slow asking. and start from a casual, slow conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're here um, to talk about slowing down. How to slow down to speed up. And our intention Would you like to is share the to, story? Yes, yes, sorry, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. our, our intention is to um, explore this topic, not just tell you what we already think, uh, but, you know, Doruk and I, we want to explore this topic from here, slowing down, and have it make a real uh, difference to you if you're listening. in in uh, in any way like small or big um i think a great way for us to get into this exploration Derek, is you you said there was this amazing synchronicity that this poem popped into your inbox Yes. yeah you But I'd maybe like you to even read before that jumping there, I would like yeah to <laughs> start with the topic selection and maybe bring hmm it back to your family and your family story, which was the beginning for my story as well. Yeah. I Yeah. don't know how long it has been, but would you like to start with yours? <laughs> Yeah, so this is about uh, getting a pet for my family. Uh, it's going to be a pet tortoise. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, that in itself is a topic of slowing down because my, my daughter has wanted a pet for years. And, you know, we've been telling her, well, we don't really have the... space and the time for it because she wants a dog or a cat or right she's like we're like we want to spend our time with you rather than taking care of the Yeah, pet another another child. <laughs> yeah and 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 my wife was definitely like no 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 we we don't want a pet right now uh, i don't know how that switched but one day i heard her my wife just saying to my daughter well maybe a Uh, snake or something Oh. and I was like what <laughs> I don't know what switched but you know all of a sudden well you should have seen my daughter's eyes light up she was like oh we can get something we could get a pet she was so excited and we did start looking into things and for some reason the, the tortoise popped into my head it's like well if we're gonna get a reptile um why not a tortoise you know because you can actually then You're more able to play with it and and so on. And for some reason, I always had this soft spot for tortoises. You know, there's something about them when you look at them so peaceful and so calm Yes. and, you know, taking their time to go from one place to the next. <laughs> and there's something so safe about them as well. You know, there's Yes. no threat whatsoever. Um, so... Yeah, I had a soft spot uh, for that. So we're going to get a tortoise. Um, but even then, even that, we're slowing down. When We've bought the tortoise. We've paid for it. But we're not getting it till November Yep, because there's we're always going to be away. a wisdom behind things. <laughs> Maybe you're yeah. supposed to wait for the right one to synchronize Yeah. with you. That's Yeah. good. So how did that inspire you that you know, Yeah, I shared so that when with you you? share the story, I totally believe in the synchronicities in life, when you can really slow down and let life to speak to you, you can get these little small signals. So when you shared the story, something in me actually triggered the same kind of emotions about what a turtle or tortoise might mean. And I was contemplating about the same things. Just a couple of days later, I signed up for a course. And this course is primarily about understanding animals and their symbols. And it's a way to actually increase our intuitive powers. So instead of really looking into logic or linguistic patterns, we can look into symbols and meanings of the animals, their wisdom, look into different ancient wisdom traditions and learn from their wisdom and Wow. personal traits. So I was invited to select an animal to start the journey. And there were 12. And the one that literally looked into my face, and that's what I call intuition, was really this little sweet turtle. 
<laughs> and I was really also yeah. inspired by your story. So I was literally, the, the seed was planted when you were telling me the story. Then among all these 12 animals, turtle was one actually calling for me. And it's very much, once again, synchronistically aligned with our timelines for deciding the topic for our next conversation. And I said, perfect. Let's talk about slowing down, which is one of the wisdom that I think we can learn from turtle. Because mm. like you said, they are slow, steady. Like we all know this um, story about the turtle winning the race. They are mm. persistent. They might go slow, but I think they are persistence, trust in life. And this cool confidence that really makes them go slow but steady is actually what's bringing quite a lot of success and prosperity for them. Apparently, by the way, they are also symbols for prosperity. And they are also holding a vision for us to be not afraid from our own powers. And mm -hmm. another interesting thing that I didn't know about Turtle, but I discovered along the journey is really how they are inviting us to be self-sufficient because they carry their, their homes with them. And because of that <laughs> reliance, they can actually prosper without sacrificing their own authenticity for others. So it's beautiful. So with that invitation, I actually get a little small symbol, which I would like to share with the audience <laughs> too. And another fun fact, not so sure if you can see it. Bigger. Uh, how do I switch you to be the bigger okay. one? <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Yeah. But for the ones who can see, ah, here we go. Oh, oh there we go. It. <clears throat> it has actually pink eyes. To me, that's also another sweet synchronicity. Again, like seeing the world with rose colored eyeglasses to me it's yeah. also optimism <clears throat> and trust to life trust that everything will be okay you are on the right path and mm. in the end everything is gonna turn out okay for you too and while i was really cultivating all this just another synchronicity mm. happened and a newsletter that i've been a member of sent their weekly newsletter and i found a little small poem in it, which was 100% aligned with the topic of conversation today. And I wanted to maybe take a minute to read it, and it could be just another intention for us to welcome its wisdom and start this conversation mm -hmm. for slowing down and trusting life yes. more. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I would invite I... anybody who's, who's listening, like when you listen... Um, <laughs> There's a way of listening where you're just listening for the words and so forth and analyzing. And there's a way of listening where you let something kind of wash over you and like, you know, go through your body and you kind of really see what sticks with you. You know, I think I would invite you to listen the second way. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> and I'm happy to share the written format after the presentation too. A rhythm to know. In a world that pulses with haste and hurry, where minds swirl in restless scurry, the river does not sprint to the sea, it meanders, it flows so leisurely. So let us walk with feet unbound, as if our toes were kissing the ground, stopping at the corner to talk to a friend without envisioning a particular end. For in the gentle pace we truly perceive, the wonders of what we truly achieve. Let's cherish each breath, each step we take, and savor the journey for its own sake. The wisdom of stillness softly repeats in the sluggish shuffle of nature's feet. She is a marathon runner, not a sprinter, yet promises a spring every winter. Like the bloom of a flower gently unfolds, or the tale of the stars, so anciently told. There is an art to the pace, a rhythm to know. The secret of life is in moving slow. Jeff Krasno, this is from Commune Newsletter, which is another beautiful community with lots of like hearted and minded teachers trying to bring more beauty into the world. So I will be happy to share oh. the written format. I, I was excited actually, I couldn't read it. But... <laughs> I hope Good. the spirit and the essence is still there. To me, it's wow, really thank you. the trust. That was really beautiful. And yeah, safety um, and love that's already there. 
yeah, I was I was feeling this, you know, even before we started this call, I was feeling this, you know, when we took a minute to take a breath, I felt this overwhelming gratitude and the same, I had the same experience when you were reading that, Thank you. you know, when it said, you know, like talking to a friend like, um, with no particular end in mind, yeah. right, that, that's, that captures so much of the beauty of it, of these little, what we um, often perceive as these little moments or moments that are on the way to something better, <laughs> but yep. they actually, they're, they're whole and complete, you know, self-contained gems. So true. So when I was actually contemplating about this topic, when we decided to talk about this almost a week ago. I have daily walks and during this daily walks, I just immerse myself in nature and allow nature to give me insights. These are more intuitive, spontaneous insights emerging. And suddenly when I was walking just by the water too, which is another cool reflective exercise which really helps me to be in the rhythm of the water just literally watching a stream and waves wherever i am depending on the context but it takes my mind from its egoistic thinking and allows this universal wisdom to pop up in its own space one thing that emerged in me is actually aligned with what you shared right now when i was thinking about earlier stages in my life where i was so impatient I was always chasing things. I was mm -hmm. always trying to achieve the next big thing. It could be in career. And on the personal space, I was a self-development junkie. Like I always wanted to do better, like sign up for all of the courses, studied all of the traditions and yoga, meditation, psychology, um, ancient traditions, whatever you name it. And Although it was somehow aligned with where I am in my own development process, I was still growing as an individual, but there was always this unease triggering that action too. Mm -hmm. I was always looking for the next thing to make me feel good. Like yes. I need to climb to the top of this mountain and develop myself so I can feel whole. Yes. What has changed along the journey and maybe my exploration has helped. I will insert another Sufi saying like, you cannot find it by searching, but the ones who find it are the ones who are searching it for it too. So it's a <laughs> part of the growth process. You need to search. But the moment I integrated more of feminine features, like slowing down, integrating meditation, yoga, this slow nature walks into my life, it made me realize how whole I am. And I didn't really have the same pressure that's pushing me for self-improvement, self-development, chasing the next big thing in my career life. And it's a different kind of mindset. It doesn't sacrifice the growth, but it mm -hmm. comes with more love, understanding, and acceptance. To me, it's like I am perfect in my holistic sense, but there's still mm -hmm. room for improvement which is a different mindset than creating with fear and creating with the assumption that you're going to achieve something and that achievement is going to make you whole. It's a yeah. different kind of state of being. And if we can only slow down to connect to that innate wholeness within us, it's always there. Because I never took time to slow down. I realized that in my earlier stages in life, I was chasing this thing as if it's externally out there. But it was mm. always inside me. And the moment mm. life actually made me slow down and connect to that inner wisdom, it was one of the biggest realizations in life. Oh, it's in me all the time. I was just mm. so busy. Yeah. Yeah. Does it resonate with your experience as well? It, it resonates a lot. And I'm like, I'm wondering if somebody is you know, um, if, if this resonates with somebody and they're listening, 
and they're in the typical business world of having lots to do, uh, too much to do. And they're also driven and they, they want to get somewhere. Yeah. Right. Like for you, how do you, you said this is not sacrificing the growth. It's like almost like a different, yes. it's a different approach. How, how do you make sense of, well, I'm still growing. It's just, there's no longer this, you know, kind of like relentless tempo to it. Uh, and you, that you can be slowed down and still growing. How do you make sense of that? And how can you help someone else make sense of that? I think on practical terms, someone can only understand if they experience it. I can tell everything mm -hmm. from my own personal point of view, but um, in the storytelling class that I took last year, there is one wisdom that stayed with me. Our teacher was saying that you can live like in fairy tales if you believe in fairy tales. So <laughs> first you have to be open. Like most of the scientific people who are driven by this growth mindset or fast mindset, in the nature of that science, there's an experiment. You need to hold an hypothesis, like assume that mm -hmm. there can be some truth in this. And yes. the only thing that I can share is really be open and experiment with your life. Give yourself a week, a couple of weeks, although you wouldn't expect something out of it. Just go out mm. in nature, 30 minutes. <clears throat> Sit by a tree, listen to the birds, like those natural rhythms, like sit by a water. If you have the means, like watch the waves. There is a rhythm there that's going to take you out of your mind. And without you planning for something, if you can just let life to hold you over time in this is also building a relationship. It might take some time. I'm not going to put a box mm -hmm. around it. It might be one week. It might be a month. It could be a couple of months. But similar to any kind of human relationship, this is really like an ignored part of you. It's in you, but you ignored it so long that you need to yeah. build that trust. All I can say is really think about it as an experiment. Integrate mm. some slow practices into your life. This could be literally the easiest free version. It's just walking mindfully out in nature. Nature is important because nature has its own cyclical rhythm that really calms our nervous system and invites us to slow down so that we can hear the insights of our hearts more. And at one point, your heart, your intuition will start to speak to you. So mm -hmm. that's a part of a different part of growth. So you are opening up space. You are holding up space for growth and insights to come to you. For yeah. example, what I shared mm -hmm. is literally before coming to this conversation, I didn't do any prep like we always do. We just show up with love and understanding and openness and with the right intention to let whatever is supposed to emerge, emerge. But I was also using this conversation for opening up more space about slowing down in my life. And mm -hmm. what yeah. naturally happened is really when I was walking, once again, during my daily walks, this insight emerged. I was like, oh, there's actually an affiliation between obsessive self-development, critical minds, and this self-judgment, and the speed of life that really pushes you to be aggressive. And if you can just slow down and allow life with love, acceptance, and confidence, that's a different style of learning. It mm. comes more in the form of immediate insights. And it can only be heard <laughs> when you have enough silence in you. It's a different form. But I also received this when I was opening up enough space for it. So in a nutshell... Yeah. I think little small experiments and maybe just holding the intention to say, hey, I would like to make an experiment with my intuition, with a different style of living with life, trusting life, slowing down, letting life to teach yes. me too. And if you can honestly, with your heart, open that space and experiment with it by allowing it to emerge this could be, like I said, nature walks 30 minutes and see what's going to happen. Yeah. See what's going to yeah. happen for you.
yeah i think that's that's a beautiful invitation and it's like um you know i think the intention is important like with somebody not the intention but um, the desire yes for that is important somebody will only be willing to experience the discomfort of slowing down right? because there's a momentum to what they're doing already so that momentum wants to keep them moving at a certain speed and it's going to be uncomfortable to let that flywheel slow down it's like oh no i need to speed up not slow down yeah so there has to be something that uh, draws them to it and usually at some level i would say like you know if there's a sort of a desire to to slow down there's a there's a part of you that says yeah oh boy that would be nice <laughs> and then and then the the loud part comes in and says i know you know you can't do that maybe next year or maybe when you finally get to here or there then you can slow down but i'd like the invitation to start with something small like if you feel like yeah i would love that it can start really small right like like a like a walk like journaling for 15 yes. minutes you know sometimes you know when i first meet somebody and let's say they're interested in uh coaching we might start off with me just listening you know and there's this whole jumble of stuff that wants to come out of them yes they haven't had time to even express it or to acknowledge it so i might spend like 10 15 minutes just listening you know and after that jumble of stuff that comes up because it's finally found a space where it's allowed to come out there's this pause of oh i feel i feel yeah. better now <laughs> right and then um and then suddenly fresh thoughts start coming right because that it's like this blocked up pipe and you know all that mud starts coming out and then suddenly clear water starts oh. coming out oh wow that's such a beautiful feeling you can feel you can almost you can see physically that the person starts to like be nourished and energized when this clear yeah you know flow starts coming through and i think that's what you mean by the experience of that yes it's a total different mindset. So instead of really adding up more, adding up more, and that's our hectic lifestyle in the Western world today, we always accumulate information, 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 and search everything externally. New subject matter experts, other achievements, accomplishments. The other path, the slower path that we are talking about right now, assumes that everything is in you. So similar to this famous definition of, I can't remember who was this famous architect who said this, but it's literally you, you are just whole, you're just getting rid of the parts that doesn't belong to oh, you. Yeah. And that innate yeah. beauty is emerging from you. It's a yes. different mindset. It comes through elimination of that blurry water and connecting to that inner purity in you. But for you to connect to that inner wisdom, you need to slow down. Because I think the heart path, that intuitive path, the nature cyclical rhythm is slow. And if we can synchronize ourselves, to me, I always revert back to nature because it's the easiest trick. It's free. It's available to everyone. It's one of the easiest ways for you to really naturally connect. Another way that you mentioned is really intentionally opening up space through journaling intentionally opening up space through eliminating most of the external factors like mindfully consuming news, mindfully setting up your standards with technology. For example, what has really helped me is really, although I've been in technology world, so especially when I was in the corporate world, I need to live with my computer and cell phone quite a long time. But in the last year, I had the opportunity to experiment a life without a cell phone. This would be quite extraordinary for my friends. They know because they've been complaining a lot. 
I'm actually not using my cell phone as a cell phone. I use it for validation purposes and SMS and stuff like that, but I only use it to intermittent checkpoints during the daytime. And yeah. if there's an urgency, people know how to reach me, but it creates quite a lot of openness in my life where I take control of my life instead of the phone controlling me. And if you don't have means to do so, you can literally turn off notifications. Be yes, mindful yes. when you are going for a walk, like turn that cell phone off. Mm. Just slow down. Just give space for that innate wisdom in you to have a speaking ground. Mm. Similar to how you build a relationship with your boss, with your colleague, with your partner, build a relationship with that innate wisdom in you. And just ask mm. questions. And the answers will come. It always yeah. comes. If you can, that's another thing. So play with life. I always say this to my friends who were cynical. Um, this is actually coming from a recent conversation I had with an engineer friend of mine uh, from high school. We were connecting over summer, and he was actually sharing how he's happy that science is finally catching up with some of the ancient wisdom and mystical traditions are becoming demystified through science. And there are podcasts like Habermas. Oh, I'm not really great. What was this professor, Stanford professor, who is unpacking most of the traditional mystical rituals and how it's actually mm -hmm. linked to science. Um, I'm not remembering his name right, but I can add him. So okay. my, my friend was asking, uh, saying how it's wonderful to see science and spiritual coming together. And we were talking about this fluffy, trusting life and synchronicities of life kind of thing. I, I asked him to experiment. Like, if you have a question, just hold the intention and let life to reveal the answer to you. Whatever grabs your attention, ask a question to universe, like, dear universe, I would like to get clarity around this topic. Show me signs and symbols. That's gonna give me some guidance and make mm -hmm. it clear enough that I will receive the meaning. And when you ask if you can openly experiment you will see that you can get results. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Yeah, yeah. But what do I need more in my life? And a turtle will come up and will say mm. that, hey, you are becoming so stressed. And another personal reason for me to choose this topic is really, I was on the personal side, putting a lot more stress to myself, saying that, oh, these changes that I'm trying to make in my life is taking longer. Is this the right path? Am I like, I started getting into my mind and that moment when I said, yeah. I need some guidance somehow through your story, through this course, through this newsletter, all of the messages started coming back to me. And I mm -hmm. said, okay, this is a long-term play. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And I need to trust that I have it in me. I need to take it slow. I need to allow life. I need to trust life that this is a long-term process. But I have it in me and it's okay to slow down. It's okay to have consistent steps over the long term. So this was just another example of me using the same trick that I shared. So if we can open yeah. up space to maybe consuming technology in a conscious way, and using nature as a simple trick or integrating little small practice into our lives consciously, like journaling, it really helps us to yeah. open that space so that we are not forced by life to slow down. And yeah. another thing, and I will be handing over to you once again, the way that you open it was really an invitation to make this consciously. And unless we do that, sometimes life really forces us. And I see many friends who are so intense in terms of their ambition being slowed down by their health because they have a disease, because the body was signaling that, hey, you need to rest, you need to rest, you need to give yourself some space. And yeah. they were so busy that they didn't listen, and the body breaks down. Yeah. Same happens with relationships. 
same happens with your corporate job. Sometimes there are things that are already giving you signals, but you're so busy that you're not even listening. And then a tower moment happens. Everything turns upside down. And it's yes. not actually a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise. It only happens. Life only intervenes in that big ways. If you're mm -hmm. not getting it signal along the journey because you don't open up space for it. That's another realization mm -hmm. that I had. I had really this big surprises when I was always in this ambitious and chasing the next thing. But right now I have less surprises in my life because I know things are coming because I have that innate slowing down practice in me. I am more receptive to life. And when something is not going well, if my body is saying, hey, I'm tired today, have a nap. I'm taking that. And I'm actually redesigning my life in a way that I can take naps and I can listen to my body, honor the needs of my body more. That's yeah. another reason that I am very passionate about this entrepreneurial journey that I am in. And I can't imagine myself literally in that nine to five realm once again, because I know that I need that responsive space to honor the needs of my body and i love mm. taking a nap during the day <laughs> yeah 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 wow this um this metaphor came to me like when you were sharing and in it's like you know imagine we're walking around right we're walking around um in a hallway or something and what we're trying to do is speed up. We're trying to walk faster and faster. So that's usually our paradigm. Slowing down is like we go to the elevator. You press a button for the elevator, then you have to stop and you have to wait. You know, And the elevator comes and then you go in there and you stand there and it might look like you're not going anywhere, right? But then the doors open and, oh, you're on a completely different floor. Yeah. So slowing down is like this access point. It's like the elevator where you can ascend to a higher level of consciousness, a higher perspective. And um, from there, like everything looks different. Right? So you, whereas you maybe were on this trajectory, when you slow down, suddenly you might pop up yes. pop out on a completely different floor, right? Yes. Where this is where somebody goes, oh, I don't know why I thought that was such a big problem. Like, it's it's fine. Or they're like, oh, obviously, I was so torn between A, B, and C. It's obviously C. You know, or right? They so that insight and that clarity comes from this expanded higher perspective. So if you're happy with where you are, you feel like, okay, like this is all good here. Like, no, maybe you don't need, you don't need to slow down. Like you're, you're, you're just going to continue then, you know, um, you're going to continue with how things are. Uh, there's an element of inertia, momentum, um, autopilot once you're at a certain level. And what we're talking about is, do you want to move up to another level? Do you want to see what's up there, right? And in a very practical sense, like we're both product people, how many times have you seen entire teams, entire divisions, you know, organizations all running down the wrong yes. hole, wrong direction? And almost pretty much everybody has a sense that something's wrong, but nobody has time to slow down. Yes. And you, you can have six months of an entire organization running down one way. And then they're like, actually, no, <laughs> that's, that's not what we want to do. This is what we're talking about. Wow. Deep. <laughs> that's actually the core of the issue. You summarize it very well. Life is full of paradoxes and slowing down to our mental mind might look like counterintuitive if you're really working towards an ambition and a goal. But like you said, it's actually the fastest way to reach 
if you can elevate to a different level of consciousness and the mind level, it's like a two-dimension plane and you're always like juggling from point A to point B, like it's the zigzag and failures and stuff like that. And when you're lost in that race, sometimes you cannot really see the opportunities that you would be able to see from an open, loving, trusting point of view. And if you can only like slow down whenever you realize that, I am lost in this, in this anxiety, like deadlines, and I can feel that something is not right, and I'm feeling that restriction. If you can just really slow down, take a nap, go out to nature, journal all of your anxiety to a paper, then burn that paper, like throw it out, like find a way to get out of that state and look into that third dimension, like literally look at that problem from a different state you can come up with new solutions that wouldn't be possible with that monkey mind action state. And this also made me remember another quote that I shared as an invitation for this conversation. The success of the intervention depends on the internal state of the intervener from Bill O'Brien. Like it is so true. Like when we are really lost in this timelines and deadlines kind of game, we sometimes forget why we are in this in the first place. And we create out of fear and whatever we create out of fear, although it might look like progress, especially in the context of, let's say, product or big business decisions. I've seen this multiple times. Like if you don't really take conscious time in the beginning parts of the creation journey to bring different points of the views together so that we leverage each other's diverse and strengths, and then create a harmony out of that. If you don't take time to do so over the longer term, those differences will be bubbling up in terms of point of conflict and discomfort, not trusting the leader, because we didn't really take time to slow down in the beginning part of the process to align, to hear different point of views and create something beautiful, bigger than everyone's point of view in the beginning part of the process. That was always something that really bothered me in this never-ending deadline world that we used to operate in, in the corporate world. Like, what if we take this time in the beginning by slowing down? So instead of really trying to solve the problems along the journey, when they pop up, we listen to each other more. And we consciously try to create with a more clear intention within the harmony of the group. But because we don't do that, because we create out of fear, like, hey, the competition is beating us. Like, we are delayed and we're late. Like, we are always looking external. Yes, there is value in the external, but there is also value in the internal. Looking into the group's wisdom, slowing down as a group, letting the presence of the group to create something more harmonious that might not be in the market. That might not be something that you can steal from a competition because no one had done it before. It's something that yeah. you create as a community, as a group, as a team, with trust, with love, with patience. And this process takes a little bit longer in the beginning. But again, it literally brings the harmony of the differences. And... Yeah. To me, that's really originality. That's true invention, truly honoring the human potential. I always bring back this. You can't do this in your personal life. To your point as well, it's not only chasing goals and dreams. It's also slowing down and allowing life to introduce new opportunities that you couldn't plan with your mind. Maybe you are going to meet a new person during your walk. Maybe because you are so busy, you didn't want to go to that event when your friend asked you to drive you. And then you just, no, I'm so busy. But maybe life was really preparing a coincidental meeting, a synchronistic meeting for you to be closer to your goals because that person was supposed to give you a wisdom that you needed. Or maybe that person is your, going to be your future co-creative partner and to me, like, it's also a humbling perspective, taking yourself out of your own ego, 
which doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't plan, you shouldn't use your mind. To the extent that's possible, let's keep our visions and goals and ambitions aligned and let's work towards it. But let's also consciously open up space without crisis in life to let life to teach us new things aligned again with our intentions. But we will not be able to plan for those things with our minds. We can only open the space and let life to reveal it. To me, that's really through optimization. You can still have your vision, but let your vision to be achieved in different ways that you wouldn't be able to come up yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a few things you said that are really important. Like, um, to be able to first um, get... Um, uh, well, let's see. To first get the vision, and to 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 um, to be able to see a vision or, or or feel it or articulate something that actually um, represents what you really want yes. versus something that is forced because of the agitation that you feel yeah. like I have to do something, you know, that fear driven. Yes. Um, when, when we are, you know, for those who are analytical or science minded, right. We can look at it from that perspective, like the brain, when it's fearful, shuts down a lot of the higher thinking centers. And then it's just like survival mode. Yes. So we're then using those, we're using that part to then try and make these decisions. Um, and it just doesn't have access to all of our intelligence. It doesn't have access to all our wisdom. So it's functioning from a very limited data set and it's also restrained by, you know, this is the ego we're talking about, our sense of self trying to preserve itself is restrained by all the rules that we've created for ourselves of what we need to be safe. So I can't have somebody raise their voice to me. I can't have somebody say I'm wrong, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I might have all these rules. And then th this is what will be driving me. So I'll be on autopilot and basically my fear will be running my life, running my decisions and so forth. Now, I might still have a ton of experience. I might still be smart. So I might still be able to navigate through life and still do things, even make things successful. It's just, it will come with that feeling. Yes. Right? And so if you're perpetually in this feeling of dissatisfaction, agitation, you know, lack, right? This is telling you something. This is a signal of your own wisdom, your own body trying to get your attention. Yes. And it's like a very polite signal initially, like it doesn't yeah. really want to interrupt. And then like you said, later on, it'll just shut you down. It's like, um, and say, well, okay, let's see if you listen now. <laughs> yeah. And I think in terms of my personal reflection and differences in my lifestyle, I can literally segment my life into two, like fast paced and slow paced. Mm -hmm. Over the last five mm -hmm. years, I have been very much leaning towards the slow pace. And especially after the pandemic, it literally turned out to be my dominant lifestyle. And when I looked into my output in life and my creative capacity, I don't really see a significant difference in terms of my creative powers. The joy I have in the process is very different. I think what I was doing before was really, although my body was signaling, and we all we are all different, by the way, I just would like to flag that too. We all have different creative processes. Some of us are more mental. Some of us are more on the feeling space. And again, I'm just, talking about my own experience, but 
in this fast-paced realm, I always forced myself to some extent because I had some certain goals and like, I need to do this today, second step, third step. And whenever I was feeling like I am losing that passion and heart connection because I had that mental goal, I was forcing myself. And I was able to produce something, but somehow I was losing that connection with my heart and I was not happy with what I produced in the end. Like my mind was happy because like, hey, you did it. You said that you are going to do this five-step process to achieve this goal that you said. Like, I'm done. But my heart was saying like, but you sacrifice the quality because you just had to finish it in the last two steps. And I was not there with you because I didn't want to do it at that particular time. When I started slowing down, I realized that I was able to combine both sides more. Again, this is not really bringing something to the life like i am able to produce things i am able to get things done but i'm able to do it in a more flexible flowing manner with the needs of my body with the emotional feelings that i feel inside me today for example the difference is really before i was let's say blocking a certain time of the day to write this newsletter it's going to be from nine to ten and right now, if I feel like that time of the day for this particular day is not working for me, I am giving myself more flexibility instead of saying like this certain time of the day is like within a week, I'm going to do it. And then if I slow down and just open up more space for that inspiration to come, instead of forcing myself, if I just go mm. out for a walk because the weather is nice and I can see the birds, that 30 minutes can really open up that space for that inspiration to come in. And many times I was able to really get things done in 10 minutes, in 15 minutes. It's literally like this love pouring out of me instead of me looking at the screen and like criticizing myself because nothing is coming. So yes. it's, it's, it's a different kind of mindset. And we all have different styles. All I am inviting is really experimentation. Do some action but consciously integrate reflection time. Take some action whenever you are called to take action, but whenever you are called not to take action, honor that too. Do not get into self-critical mindset. It's okay to take time off. It's okay not to do something whole day if you feel like you need to rest and you need to recover and you just need to do nothing. Think about nothing. <laughs> and my most of the creative efforts always came after those long pauses. Another important personal reflection before, because I think the process is a little bit more externally driven, once again, mind, like step by step. It's also based on what's out there. You look into subject matter experts, productivity tips and tricks, and then you play within the known realm. Yeah. If we are thinking about really original things, the things that didn't exist before, that really makes us human. And I think this particular originality and authenticity, authentic creation is more important today because most of the known stuff could be reproduced by artificial intelligence better than us. So what has already been there? Could we repurpose better than a human mind by the machines? What I think differentiates us is really that intuitive wisdom emerging from the depths of our hearts when we slow down. That insight, that aha moment, that new thing that didn't exist before can only come when we slow down. So that's also the realization that I'm able to see between two sides of my creative journey. One was more externally productive in terms of the number of things that I produced maybe, but in terms of the joy that I had the process and the quality, it was sacrificed because some parts of the process I didn't really honor other parts of my identity, like when my heart was saying that I'm not feeling it right now, I just push myself, no, we have to do this. Or when my body was telling me, hey, I need to rest. Let's take 30 minutes nap. And I said, no, this is in the calendar. Like we need to do this. I'm disciplined. I'm committed. It's a different part of commitment right now. I am yeah. committed to not only to my mind, 
I am committed to my body. My body's mm. needs. I'm committed to my mind's intellectual needs. I'm committed to my heart's passions. And I am literally doing experimentation in terms of harmonizing all of them. So I'm not listening to only one and finding the sweet balance. Well, I can't say that I am perfect. Sometimes I'm leaning towards too much laziness on the body side. And sometimes I'm like a butterfly on the heart side, like chasing literal butterflies outside. And my mind <laughs> needed to be productive. I said, okay, guys, like we are going to meet in the ground. <laughs> and <laughs> it's an experimentation. And we all have different needs based on where we are in our own lives too. But all I'm saying is really, we need to invite all those parts to come together and that can only happen if you open up space for it to happen by slowing down, by intentionally mm-hmm. creating that space. Knowing that whatever is going to emerge from that space is going to be more meaningful for you first. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I think we're both so passionate about this because... Um, Like, imagine you have a best friend and they're trying to get your attention. So they call you, but you're busy. So you don't, you don't pick up. And then they knock on the door and you're like, uh, can you come back tomorrow? And then, you know, and then, and then you keep doing that on and on. Right. Well, they, they never get heard. They never get like that 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 connection whatever connection you had right you're, you're not keeping it alive and there's going to be implications of that you're going to feel that you know sort of disappear out of your life in our you know our last conversation was about knowing yourself well slowing down is how you know yourself exactly and aristotle's aristotle said that like i think something about wisdom beginning of wisdom is knowing yourself or something like that and so you are like that best friend that that you inside you um the whole of you your heart or whatever you want to call it is constantly trying to get your attention and if you're like 99 percent of us you've learned to ignore it and actually listen to what everybody else thinks you should do even if they said it 10 years ago right or 20 years ago and so then we're doing all those things so if if, for example if you ask yourself if you say to yourself i can't slow down now you ask yourself why can't i slow down right and just be honest and write it down why can't i slow down and then you might write something now ask why again why is that because of this, because of this. Now, who said all these things? Who's making up all these rules? And are they true? Um, And only by being willing to slow down and kind of face, kind of look at the world that you've created and look at the sense of self that you've created can you see what you've created and can you that's the only way you can see what you've created and you can see whether they're true or not whether they serve you or not whether they are even what you want beautiful Ethan. i think i can only echo my invitation is just to try what if the magic is on the other side and no one can know only you will know and the only way that you can know is really by trying. And especially if you are on the science path, that's one of your core principles to live by in life. Like um, you need to test and experiment and you need to see whether this is true for you. All mm-hmm. I can say is really my experience as someone who has been on the science path for decades of my life, engineer by training, 20 years in the corporate world, business school, I've been always in that scientific world of the mind, hypothesis, testing, failures, and learnings. And all I can say is really, I did the test myself and discovered magical things that only enhanced my life. 
So I can only share an invitation. But if there is magic on the other side, you can only live like in fairy tales if you believe in fairy tales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, my last observation cool. from my side is really when I was lost in my business, when I saw someone so calm, serene, and happy in their slow lifestyle, I was always feeling that there's something calling there. I was sensing it. And I was wondering, like, how can they be like that? <laughs> and to me, that was just another invitation. If something is grabbing your attention, just take it as an invitation to be curious about it. Everything starts with curiosity. And then letting that curiosity to reveal its secrets and invitation. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um... I, I was, I was like you, like very, very left brain, so to speak. Uh, you know, I did computing, I did masters in finance, and you know, statistics and all that. And but there's just, it's you, you can't deny that a lot of life is invisible and intangible. Yes. And if you want anything to kind of prove it to you that one of the easiest things you can do is just look at relationships. Look at a relationship which you would love to deepen or somewhere like, you know, let's say either with your kids, your partner, and you're like, oh man, I wish, you know, I could have a deeper connection here or something. Could even be a colleague where you, who you have a conflict with. What would it be like to slow down with this person? Well, if you find yourself in a conversation with a person and there's always this hurricane that spins up with a particular topic or, you know, some type of conflict that comes up, then that is where if you can experiment with slowing down there, like that's the easiest way you can see the miracle for yourself. You know, with, with my son, for example, I, you know, I can feel this urgency because he's like me, like just wants to look at this and that and you know he's like you know he's he'll be sitting down to eat dinner and he'll just get off like 20 times to go <laughs> he's like oh i just need to get this thing <laughs> right and so if i can if i can feel this sped up thing going going on inside me and if i can then um, be willing to feel it or be willing to investigate it and let go of it even a little bit i find that oh i'm suddenly able to stay with him like i'm able to hear him when he says hey i just want to see this thing i can actually hear oh yeah i can i can feel the curiosity in him i can feel what's actually going on for him and i can speak to him at his level we have that connection because if i'm caught up in the storm I'm speaking from a completely different world, you know? I'm like, just sit down, just sit down and eat first. You know, I, I don't even hear him. And he he knows that, right? So this is the fastest, most magical way that I've seen. Um, and clients tell me that all the time. Like, you know, yeah, they have relationships and conversations which are like magic when they just are able to slow down. Another beautiful gift of slowing down, listening. It allows you to be present enough to listen. Wow. In my yoga class, my instructor, Jai, who shared many wisdom in my life, um, he was sharing another ancient wisdom saying that there is actually a wisdom behind us having two ears and mm -hmm. one mouth. This is really a beautiful invitation for us to listen to eyes more than we speak. And if you can only do that by slowing down, by paying attention to what life is trying to give us, by listening, by being more present, I think we can solve most of our problems and we can find the peace, the love, acceptance, wholeness. We are all looking externally inside us first. 
And when we find that internally, we don't need to do much. Just our presence really invites others to find something interesting that they are searching for too. So it creates this ripple effect of change. Like, oh, here's a person who is listening, who is happy, who is content. Like, how can they do that? Let me listen <laughs> to them more. Yeah. Mm. I think that's a beautiful way to uh, wrap it up, Daruk. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you for slowing down with me. And this was beautiful. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, if anybody's listening, like we would love to hear what landed for you. Yes. You know, whether you have any questions or any direction you'd want to go in next. Yeah. We would definitely love to hear from you. Yeah. Well, today we were having our conversation uh, in a very cozy setting alone, but we would love to see others and we would love to see more engagement as well. So if you like it, please share what you like, what resonated. Uh, if you find it insightful, please share it with others who might get benefit from these conversations as well. And if there are particular topics that you would like to co-create with us, that you think would be meaningful for us to focus on next time, please reach us. Reach out. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye. Bye.